Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can make a kinematic rigid body follow a curve or a precise path between one point and another point. So we can have easing for this curve, we can make it wobble if we want. Uh, basically whatever kind of path we want our object to follow, we can do that through scripts. So this isn't strictly an animation, but if we take a look at the code that I went ahead and wrote, we can see that it uses these properties called animation curves. So animation curves allow us to set values against time. So basically for any time during the course of this script, it's going to have a certain value. So this curve is for the X value and you can see it's got some curves here. You can set default curves by changing this kind of thing around. I'll hit control Z to undo that. Um, and you can also add in extra keyframe points. So if you want it to have a more complicated animation, just double click on the curve somewhere and add in your extra keyframe. And then for the Y curve, we have this where as it uh, occurs between zero seconds and two seconds, it's going to go up and then it's gonna come down. So this allows us to precisely control something like a jump where it goes up and comes down. Uh, for one of those values, you could of course add in a Z curve if you wanted to make this 3D as well. And we take these values at the given times and we apply that to the starting position of the object here. So basically whatever the starting position is, we add the value that is at whatever time, 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.5 seconds, so on and so forth. And we add that to the position to get our new position, creating the curve that looks something like this. But you can of course expand out the values if you want it to be a longer uh, effect then you just move it over here if you want it to be more dramatic and powerful then you increase the x or y values so to play it one more time before we delve into the code a little bit here you can see the path it's following it moves over on the x but with the y it goes up and then it comes down exactly following our curves over there so if we take a look at our script here we of course have those animation curves. You need one for each value because it's a uh, value against time graph. So one graph per X, Y coordinate. Um, and we're applying those values to the rigid body. If you're using kinematic rigid bodies, it's recommended that you change the position on the rigid body rather than the transform itself. That will help you a lot when it comes time for things like colliding with other objects. You'll get none of that unwanted choppy effect in things like pixel art games where when one object tries to move into another, it kind of kicks it back out as it bumps into the wall. The rigid body 2D will prevent all of that. And then we have a uh, curve position here, which I think is actually unneeded. That might have been something I uh, had in the original script, but didn't actually need in the end. Uh, time elapsed here, obviously, for determining what point in the curves it is currently, uh, whether it's started or not. And then we, of course, need to get reference to that rigid body. So on awake, we get the component rigid body. So it should be attached there. And we could even add up here a attribute require component type of rigid body 2D. That would be a good idea because the script does, in fact, require that. Um, so then the work actually comes down here in fix update. Uh, we have this starting function. So basically, if it's not started yet, we start it, which sets the time elapse to zero and we get our starting position. On every other frame, uh, what we do here is we add the time dot delta time, the time since the last frame, and we set the time elapsed to the positions and the curve. So we get the value from the curve, we evaluate it based on the time that it has elapsed. So if 0 0.5 seconds has elapsed, we get the x value and the y value uh, at 0 0.5 seconds. So that will give us basically how much value the starting position should have changed over time. So our new value becomes the starting position plus whatever the value is at the evaluated time for both the X and Y positions. Now, uh, you can get a lot more complicated in terms of curves looking at the keyframes, but this is definitely the easiest way to get the value out. So I recommend you use uh, the animation curve dot evaluate method and it's really, really simple here. So uh, we set that as a new vector two for the new position that our rigid body has. So body.move position to this new position, and then that's it. So our new position is gonna be completely controlled based on this follow curve. Now, obviously I'm having this occur on the object as soon as the game loads. You could have this be something of an event where 
has to come into contact with something like an on trigger enter 2d then you start this method and run it on the object uh, so that would be a decent place to look at after this but this is the result you get with what we have so far so really easily being able to create curve based movement on an object that is a kinematic rigid body inside of unity so hopefully this helps you guys out quite a bit if you're trying to make curved movement without relying on a dynamic rigid body without using the unity physics inside of your game but rather using kinematic movement uh, so i've been chris thanks for watching and i will see you guys in my future unity content